Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash bookshow. Then go over to morbidlybeautiful.com as we are now part of the Morbidly Beautiful Podcasting Network. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. Have you checked the children? I want to play a game. The box. You opened it. We came. This is the All American Sweet Show. Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the All-American Spook Show Horror Podcast. I'm Josh and I'm joined here with Will hey, hey. and Donnie. Hey. And the Professor Smoke is uh, on vacation. He couldn't be with us this week, so we're just going to power on without him. But, although I wish he was here for this one because I, I really think uh, he, w- he would have had fun with this one. So uh, we're doing this new rotation bit where he, one of us picks it like every other week, you know, when we do the horror reviews. And uh, Will had first choice a couple weeks ago when we did Night of the Living Dead. So it's my turn this time around. And I chose Deathgasm from 2015. So uh, we'll be getting into that today. But, you know, before we uh, dive into it, uh, I'll go ahead and throw out the usual information. Now, uh, I'll say off the top, we are a spoiler-filled podcast. So for whatever reason you have not seen Deathgasm, uh, we encourage you to, <laughs> to go watch this movie. Because this is, you know, like we say this a lot, but this is definitely one you need to see. Love it or hate it, I think you need to witness it. So with that out of the way, though, I'll go ahead and throw out the usual information. You can contact us uh, through email at allamericanspookshow at gmail.com. We're on all the regular social networks. Um, Go to our YouTube page where every Wednesday night live at 9 p.m. East, we do Deadline Horror News, where we talk about the latest, you know, headlines and horror news and goings-ons. Um, we have a Public page where you can go get our logoed merchandise and, uh, you know, shirts and mugs and all kinds of other random stuff with our logos and other cool designs that we have over there. So go check that out. And we also have patreon.com slash AA Spook Show where you can become a patron of the show, level starting at a dollar, three dollars, all the way up to a thousand dollar, you know, goofy level that we have that no one will ever get. But you never know. Um, that's there. And we have cool bonus episodes. Like that's where we put Crafter Peace Theater every month. Uh, the Spook Show rewinds every month. Uh, Professor Smoke has uh, his uh, written articles over there. So lots of cool stuff. Uh, every Tuesday we have a, a video mini w- with the Library of the Professor. That's all over there on Patreon. All the links to all these things that I just talked about should be down in the show notes. Click on the link tree. should all be lined up there for you for your, your clicking pleasure. So um, with that out of the way, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, toss to the trailer for 2015's Deathgasm. evil heavy metal that your parents hate you listening to? You know those lyrics about hell, demons and doom? What if I told you it's all real? I know. I was there. Jesus! It's piss. That's me, Brody. My friends are losers. So we started a band. Check it out. Ricky Daggers. Is he dead? It'd be crazy if the music had something to do with demons. Demons. We're all gonna die. I translated those pages. Now people are turning crazy, like possessed, crazy. That was pretty cool. As is, I mean, the axe and the. You 
No? I'm not even sure I'm in the right tuning. Oh, that is still. All right, so there it is. So uh, I guess, you know, before we before we dive into the movie, or, you know, we'll go ahead and do the background stuff that we normally do. I, I guess I'll ask, and I won't get your uh, initial reactions or anything like that, because, you know, we don't really do that anymore, so we can get to the meat of the matter here in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But is this the first time either of you guys had watched this one? What was the... Donnie, I guess you first. Yes, it was. Uh, I had actually watched it a second time, because, uh, you know, just before the show, I uh, wanted to, you know, just kind of reinforce my thoughts initially um but yeah this was well this would be the second time that i've i've watched it but so you, you know, watched since it two it was, times for yeah. this recording basically yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah that's right what about you will was this the first time yeah, yeah first time i've seen it uh i don't think i had heard of it before this yeah i had i'd heard of it a while back uh but i hadn't watched it until just a few weeks ago and then I, as soon as i watched it, i'm like oh yeah yeah we got to get this in now you know like this wasn't uh, I don't remember what my other choices what were, you know, when I kind of had like a little mini list. I had three or four movies there. I really had my mind on another one. I don't recall what it was right away. I don't have the list in front of me. But then, like, when I watched this one, I'm like, this went to the top of the list. So I wanted uh, I wanted to get you guys, you know, to, to witness this. And I thought this was one we could have fun with. Like I said, I'm disappointed Smoke's not on this episode because I really think uh, uh, he would have... Uh, uh, had a few things to say but we will get his uh you know his thoughts and his rating and all that at a later mm -hmm. time you know whenever he can come uh get back on after his vacation seems like he's been on vacation forever so <laughs> uh whenever he gets back we'll uh we'll get his thoughts and everything so uh but yeah when i watched it though a few weeks ago that was the first time i'd watched it either like i said i'd heard of it just you know hadn't sit down and watched it so i finally got around to it i'm like yeah here we go yeah it was it was actually uh it was on my list to watch but it just kind of it, it was just kind of buried in my list. Um, but, you know, I I can't remember if I had watched the trailer or not, because sometimes I don't. You know, if I just see something that, you know, has a a, a plot that's, uh, you know, kind of interesting, I'll just pop it on the list and not even watch a trailer. Yeah. Uh, um, but sometimes I do watch the trailers. But, um, yeah, either way, we'll get to that. Uh, so, like I said, we encourage you to go watch it if you haven't yet, you know, so – you know, now's your chance before we get into it. But I will throw out where it's available streaming. This is one of the, this is one of the ones where it's available in a lot of places. Kind of like Night of the Living Dead when we watched that a couple of weeks ago. Like that's on like 85 different streaming services because you know it's public domain. Um, but this one's pr pretty damn close itself. It's got a lot. Uh, you can watch it on AMC Plus, Hoopla, Shutter, Tubi, Pluto TV, Peacock, Plex, Vudu. And the Roku channel. Now, a lot of those options are with ads, but still, mm -hmm. um, plenty of options to watch it for free if you don't already own a copy or don't want to, you know, feel like buying it or whatever. So, tons of options to go check out Deathgasm. So, if you haven't, we encourage you to go do so and then come back and listen to the rest of this. So, the background information I pulled up. So, another name for this movie is actually, which I think this one's just as good. I mean, this this title would pull me in just as much as Deathgasm, Heavy Metal Apocalypse. Mm. like either way right yeah, <laughs> yeah either way yeah and frankly that one's probably a little bit more appropriate than deathgasm but but i would say deathgasm is probably like wait a minute what the hell is that about you know <laughs> when you hear it it's going to be more of a kind of pull you in you would at least kick the tires on that if you saw the title like wait a minute you <laughs> you know if this is your kind of thing right you would at least read the synopsis to see what this is about if you saw the mm -hmm. title deathgasm yeah Maybe not so much heavy metal apocalypse, but who knows? I'd say it's it caters to a specific type of audience either way. Um, I would it, guess the uh, I'd guess that that title also is a little close to uh, Metalocalypse. Metal, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it was released March fourteenth, twenty fifteen, at the South by Southwest Film Festival, and then it played at a you know like a number of uh, festivals in between that and when it got released here in the United States, which was October second, twenty fifteen. Um, and it was released or produced by MPI Media Group, the New Zealand Film Commission, Timpson Films, which this was produced by Ant Timpson, and we'll get into him in just a second. Mm. Uh, this film was not rated, which God Almighty could only imagine what the MPAA <laughs> yeah. would do to this movie when they watched it right. Which I'm assuming it probably didn't get a... I can almost assure you this did not get a wide release uh, in the United States, at least. Um, it did get released, and I think it did play at some theaters, but... Um, I, I couldn't find any uh, strict 
budget, and I couldn't yeah. find like a box office for this either. So I would imagine it's probably not much. Right? This doesn't lend. This kind of movie doesn't lend itself to box office. Uh, uh, you know, big big off box office bank is what I'm trying to spit out. Um, but anyways, uh, the total runtime is one hour twenty six minutes. On IMDb, it's listed as an action slash comedy slash horror. Uh, and it won the. 2013 Make My Horror Movie Contest in New Zealand. For winning that, it received, uh, I don't know how they say their money, I'm just going to say dollars. New Zealand, $200,000. Which roughly in the U.S. right now, you know, exchange rates fluctuate. But roughly right now, that's about $138,000 was the prize to go towards production. Now, I'm assuming that's they probably raised more money than that afterwards to make this. But I don't know, for this kind of movie, 138K... You know, U.S., you know, if these guys knew what they were doing, and obviously they did, they, yeah. probably, they probably stretched that a little bit. But I'm sure they probably got some more financing, too. Yeah. Um, but that goes hand-in-hand in hand with what I said. I could never really find a, a strict budget or what it made in the box, so I don't know you know, what the measure of success was there. It was directed and written by Jason Howden. Uh, he would best be known for, uh, he made another movie called Guns Akimbo, I oh man, he, that that movie is awesome. I've never that, seen it. I've heard of it because you know that's the kind of title when you hear it, like, oh, that sounds interesting. And then, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, I I, I would absolutely recommend that. And he's I, um he's more known for uh, visual effects. Yeah, I, I was going to say that he actually did a lot of visual effects artist. He was a visual effects artist. I'm sorry, on all three of the Lord of the Rings movies, yeah. um, a, a similar role in all three of the Hobbit films, the Avengers, a number of hu- other huge productions. Um, but yeah, the, basically, he, and he hasn't directed or written a lot more. Mm-hmm. A lot of his credits are that, like you said, but still, uh, pretty impressive stock. And I would assume that means him and some other people too, since he's from New Zealand, uh, hang around in the Peter Jackson group of guys. Cause there are a lot of connections there. Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit, you know, Peter Jackson, all that kind of stuff. I, I think it kind of comes from that, but the, it was produced by Ant Timpson, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, he produ- also produced Come to Daddy. I think that came out, uh, within the last year or two. Uh, that mm. one was pretty good. That had, uh, I think it was Elijah Wood that was in that. Housebound, the ABCs of Death. That's an anthology movie where <clears throat> all it's basically A to Z in the movie. Each little segment, and they're very brief segments. I mean, like a minute or two or three. You know, none of the segments are longer than like you know three or four minutes. And each segment has something to do with the letter of the alphabet, the way the person dies in the segment. So it's like uh, A is for asphyxiation. And then you'll see someone die that way in the film and be so on. Right. Um, and I think there was a couple of those, if I'm not mistaken, but he definitely produced the first one. So there, there's where your horror background comes in. This guy he decided to produce this film. It stars Milo Cawthorn as Brody. Um, he would uh, also be known from, he, he actually had a part in Guns Akimbo as well, which that came out after this movie. So obviously he kind of had his own crew of guys there by that point. Um, yeah. he was also, uh, in Ash versus evil dead. Remember that star? I think it was on stars. It was a series that lasted three or four seasons. Uh, he was in the movie blood punch. Uh, it stars James Joshua Blake as Zach. Uh, his was interesting because he, he had a couple of uh, credits, nothing major, but the one that mm-hmm. I found interesting was he was a body double for Thorin Oakenshield and Hobbit An unexpected journey. That was the first Hobbit movie that came out, you know, <laughs> decade ago or so, however long it's been now. And Kimberly Crossman is Medina Darcy. Um, now she has played in a number of series and a lot of stuff, you know, down in New Zealand, Australia, I guess, you know, the, the television down there, but she was actually one of the Power Rangers and Power Rangers, Super Samurai. And she was also on the series Smilf, <laughs> which that's an, uh, I guess that's an American series. I'm not really sure where that's produced, but I think that, that came on one of like the premium cable channels, you know, like stars, Cinemax, Showtime, one of those. As far as I could tell there though, there really wasn't many more, uh, you know, from the cast to really point out. Um, so that's really about all I had, you know, as far as my, uh, you know, cursory research that I did for this. Did you guys find anything else that was worth pointing out before we, before we uh, dive into it and do the roundtable? Yeah, you had, you had mentioned uh, Power Rangers. Um, <clears throat> uh, Milo was also uh, in Power Rangers as well as the, uh, um, I believe it was uh, Kate Elliott. Uh, who played uh, Abigail. Hmm. She was also in uh, Power Rangers, the same kind of series with um, um, Kimberly Crossman. Yeah, because it seemed like when I was looking at some some of these, 
there was another, I want to say there might have been another Power Rangers series. It was like two separate ones or something that some yeah. of them were involved with. But either way, yeah. So that means they must film those down down in New Zealand or something. Or at least those particular series they did because a lot of these are, you know, New Zealanders. So it, it only makes sense, really. You know, you logically connect the dots. The only other thing that I uh, was able to find was that um, this was nominated for the best makeup and creature effects. Uh, at the 2016 uh, Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Um, and then also, it was nominated, you know, but it, of course it didn't win. Mm. Uh, um, but it also won several awards at, you know, f- film festivals across the world. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, uh, yeah, a number of them, like the Toronto After Dark Film Festival. <laughs> yeah, uh, Total Film, Fright Fest, uh, a number of others. Arizona Underground Film Festival. One one and or was nominated for tons of awards at all those festivals. So, like I said, it did play quite a bit of uh, festivals after it was released at South by Southwest until it finally got released in October of that year. So um, there was supposed to be a sequel to this um, titled Deathgasm Part 2 Gormageddon. Um, and apparently he, he like he had revealed like, yeah, I'm going to be making this. And this was like right after. This one came out, so it was like December of 2015. And then one of his quotes uh, that, you know, Jason Howden said, uh, I'll read this quote, there's literally more gore in the first 10 minutes of this one than the entire first Deathgasm. If you kind of like the first, this will make your head implode. (laughs) If you thought the first Deathgasm was puerile, juvenile, and dumb, then Gormageddon will melt your face off and force you (laughs) to... And force you to barricade yourself inside, safe with some Terrence Malick and Coldplay. <laughs> but unfortunately, about a year ago, at the end of January 2021, he tweeted that the film was rejected by the New Zealand Film Commission, so uh, the production would not go forward. So I'm assuming that means it was deep into pre-production, at least up until that point, and then just that sucks. died on the vine because they wouldn't pay for it. <laughs> so I guess they took one look at the script and like, nope, no, nope, we're out. You got away with the first one, but you're not you're not getting past it again, motherfucker. But yeah, it is interesting that like a country would fund a movie like this, right? Like yeah. they clearly <laughs> didn't know what the hell they were buying. When... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, no, they That's found awesome. they found out, and then he didn't get to make another one. So maybe maybe one of these days, maybe one of these days, if he can find financing in another way, uh, we'll, we'll get to see the sequel. It's refreshment time. And our refreshment stand is loaded with good things to eat. There's crispy, crunchy popcorn. And hot, delicious, buttered popcorn. Lots of candy. And frosty, refreshing cold drinks. Why not treat yourself at the refreshment center now? For you, the listeners of the All-American Spook Show podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. So when you go sign up using audibletrial.com slash spookshow, you'll get a credit. You can take that credit to get any one book on Audible, and then, uh, you, you know, you can cash that in, get whatever you like, and then if you decide, look, this isn't for me, I don't want it anymore, you can cancel the service, and you still get to keep that book. So it helps us out. You get a free Audible, you know, audio book out of it, win-win for everybody. So I just went and typed in Satan on Audible because <laughs> we typed in Deathgasm, and nothing came up. So just went in and typed in Satan to see what would come up. And, of course, we got at least, what well, I've got 221 results here. Let's see. Satan, an autobiography uh, by from the teachings of Rav Berg, whoever that is. But that one's over four hours long. Uh, let's see. Just skip down a little bit here. Satan, Prince of This World by William Guy Carr. That one's seven and a half hours long. And then uh, one more. Let's see. Th- this is interesting. Satan's Harvest. By Ed and Lorraine Warren. It's the book six hmm. of uh, their books. Um, that one is uh, almost eight hours long. So tons of, uh, like I said, over 221 uh, uh, results there I got for uh, Satan. So if <laughs> if you're down with Satan, you, go t- <laughs> you can go type that in and find plenty of results over on audibletrial.com slash bookshow. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash bookshow for your free audio book. So there we go. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get into the the, the, the general plot uh, uh, of Deathgasm here, although some of it's kind of, you know, you kind of have to see it. So, you know, like, <laughs> d- describing some of this isn't going to necessarily be... Uh, it's just not. You know, but, like, you, you de- this, like I said, love it or hate it, this is one that you have to see. You just need to see it for yourself and, and judge for yourself. But I would imagine 
the most people that like this podcast or listen to this podcast and like horror movies are probably going to like this one. So that's a, a you know a, a shot in the dark, so to speak. But I'm pretty safe. I feel I'm pretty safe saying that. Um, but the movie um, starts with basically uh, uh, you're introduced to Brody, and uh, uh, his, his dad is dead, and he and he just lives with his mom. And then his mom is institutionalized in a mental hospital. So then he has to go live with his uncle, and Brody is a, a, a you know heavy metal. He's a metalhead. Basically, you know, of course, it's the old setup of like he has to move into the Christian house or whatever. So they shut all of his shit down. You know, he's just kind of beat down, and uh, uh, immediately there, and his, and his cousin or whatever, just like literally is like one of the lead bullies who kicks the oh, shit definitely. out of him and stuff. <laughs> so yeah. really, it's kind of like heavy metal uh, Harry Potter going on here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sans the uh the the hogwarts magic he makes friends with a couple of guys at school uh dion and giles um and then they you know they play like role-playing games like, like dungeons and dragons stuff like that uh so then he meets another guy named zach another you know who's another metalhead at a, a, a record store uh they become friends and then eventually they decide to form a band and they call the band deathgasm so there's your there's the title of the movie right there they could have just ended it right and it there. Ends, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could have just ended it. Like, but oh, it's roll. The band is Deathgasm. And then they all point at the camera. Somebody says we're all getting laid. And, <laughs> and then it goes off. <laughs> what was that where you, the, uh, a couple weeks ago where you said something, somebody hit the brown note? <laughs> Everybody shit themselves. <laughs> credits. <laughs> so anyways, he meets a girl named uh, uh, Medina who, uh, uh, you know, he, he, ta- you know ob- he pretty much just instantly has a crush on her. Uh, she actually shows him some interest, but then eventually, yeah, eventually, like uh, Zach kind of stabs him in the back on that, right? And then there's this whole little love triangle kind of, you know, going on a little bit later on. So apparently, they're big fans of this of this guy, this this uh, heavy metal musician from back in the day. His name's Ricky Daggers, who uh, supposedly lives nearby. So they go and uh, check out this abandoned house where they they find him inside, uh, and then they uh, they try to. Don't they try to like? It's like a, a an album that didn't get released or something yeah. like that, and then they. That's like an unreleased album. They, yeah. Uh, they they try to. Um, but he's when they when they walk into the house, and they they kind of just sneak into the house. But he's clutching. He's like I guess he's passed out on the couch. They think he's dead, but um, <laughs> he's he's clutching that album. And then when they take it from him, he wakes up and like attacks him. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the inside of that house does not match the outside of that house. No. Yeah. The inside of the house is dilapidated, and the outside looks like a just a normal suburban house. Yeah, yeah. He uh, basically uh, he hears a noise, and so he hands them the album and tells them to run away. After they leave, this dude walks in and uh, kills Daggers. Um, apparently, he's part of a cult, which is looking for the Black Hymn. It's uh, a sheet music. With the power to summon demons, so uh, he he failed to obtain it because uh, uh, apparently uh, Brody and Zach have it, right? Because um, yep. they found it hidden inside the record. Because then they get home with the record and then it was smashed, right? So well, yeah, it was. Uh, they got home with the record and he uh, he wanted to see what the record was and it turned out to be a Rick Astley record. So he yeah. got Rick rolled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, Rick rolled uh, that, via vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. It's Rick Astley. It's Rick Astley. <laughs> what accent were you doing? <laughs> it was kind of a New Zealand accent is what I was going for, so but I don't know what it... I think I kind of sound, ended up sounding like an old uh, 1800s prospector for some reason. <laughs> um, but they, they take the sheet music and they start playing it, and like the lights flicker in response, and then like uh, the dude's uncle like starts bleeding from his eyes and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then that's when they realize, like, wait a minute, what the fuck? This, this isn't right. Um, but they, they, uh, they didn't complete the black hymn. The, the next day at school, uh, uh, Brody translates the Latin reading on the old, you know, sheet music there. And uh, it reads, the black hymn, play it to invoke the demon. So, <laughs> so, of course, like, all right, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> there was, uh, um, what is, and actually what the translation was, it's... Um, Summoning the King of Demons, uh, a black hymn for gaining power and fortune. I don't know if you guys have uh, listened to Red Sparrows, but they have some of the longest motherfucking song titles. <laughs> and it, that, that, that is exactly what it, uh, you know. And it, it's like that was, kind of stuff. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm sure uh, Smoke would have been able to fill us in on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've listened to them for years. Anyways, uh, uh, basically, like, his cousin, uh, Brody's cousin beats the shit out of him again <laughs> and tells him to stay away from Medina, uh, who, who apparently, I guess, he had a thing with at some point. That's when Medina meets up with Zach, and uh, I, I think basically, like, uh, they end up making out or something, right? I think it, that's when it happens, kind of around that. There's this little back-and-forth kind of thing where, like, Zach's trying to get on her even though... He knows Brody likes and likes her, and it's a whole thing back and forth. That's kind of yeah. a little bit of a subplot where there's like a, a friction between them. This is around the time that Brody suspects, like, all right, playing the black him is some somehow connected to, you know, evil shit. Mm. So, so they uh, they they continue to do it. He wants this now, like he wants to take possession of these powers. So if they play the black him, he'd have some type of powers. Um, they play it. The amplifiers explode. Uh, all of them fall unconscious. I think everybody's starting to like puke up blood and stuff like outside the home, right? And their eyes are bleeding. Like and their shit. neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when they wake up, they notice like something has changed. Brody meets Terry, a strange and frightening being in the school's toilet who threatens him. Soon after that, uh, Mr. Cappenhurst, he starts to bleed from his, uh, uh, from his, uh, body's orifices. And let's just say that <laughs> he starts throwing up blood on the students. Starting, like, this is like the teacher in the class. Yeah, she just sits there while he's like puking <laughs> blood on her. He's like, <laughs> and she just, she doesn't move at all. She's just like, and it's like, yeah, it's like it's, stand by me, yeah, height contest. <laughs> like, I was thinking like SNL. I was thinking SNL when they like vomit and it's just like shooting out of the sleeve of their, <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brody tells Zach what happened. Here, when you know, after the, like what happened at the school and everything, and then they're then they are attacked by Zach's dad, and uh, I, I think they actually like kill him, right? Right then when they're attacked by him, after he tears out his own eyes, and tried to kill them, they yeah, uh, it's, they kill it's him. like Pan's labyrinth. Yeah, <laughs> when he holds him, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of this kind of stuff, like people are getting possessed and shit and attacking people. Uh, Medina got attacked and she, she killed a dude with an ax. Zach and Brody actually go to a, this girl that I guess Zach knew, Abigail, which was like a fortune yeah. teller. It was for, yeah, she worked at the record store. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I forgot that you were introduced to her like briefly before. She tells him that they have invoked the demon Aloth, the blind one, by playing the black him. And by 3 a.m. he will merge with the most evil human being present. Um, then of course, b b before, before she can tell them how to undo all this, she's killed. Basically, Zach just kind of like, uh, well, I I'm out. Like, I'm not going to fight this and fuck everybody. But, uh, Brody manages to convince him to help. Um, mm -hmm. because he assumes that it will all be undone by playing the black him, black him backwards. When they go to retrieve the sheet music or whatever, like the sheet music is blown out the window. Uh, yeah. so like that's gone now. They don't, they can't do that. And then they're attacked by uh, uh, Brody's uncle because now he's possessed and his uh, and his aunt Mary. Uh, wasn't there like a, ba a box of something there? Yeah, they call it church, church stuff. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they come in the house and they're like immediately attacked, and then they um, make their way. You know, we're able to run to, I guess, uh, his uncle and aunt's uh, bedroom. They shut the door, barricade the door. And they're looking for weapons, and they found, well, maybe there's, you church know, stuff, stuff to fight demons. Yeah, I think they're looking uh, for church stuff. Yeah, they're looking for crosses or or holy yeah. water or something. But instead, they found they found dildos, and uh, <laughs> sex toys. So then demons. there's a whole fight with dildos and everything, uh, <laughs> where they actually take them out with some like sex toys and shit. His cousin is one of the possessed too. They, you know, they uh, they chop his Damn. head off as he comes in. Um, <laughs> I don't know that he was possessed. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. His cousin was like, "Oh shit, was he one of them?" Yeah, I think so. Something, yeah, something to that. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, he was. He, was, he was, was. He was clearly just like coming in and, uh, you know, not possessed. Just, yeah. you know, he was. <laughs> hey, what's he was going off on? <laughs> his uh, his misdeeds. So God. now you've got like members of the cult too. Uh, they're around because they they want this to happen. So like they're in the background as well. Terry, who is Aloth's ambassador, he promises that Aloth will merge with uh, uh, Ian. And then in that moment, Ian is killed by his acolyte Shanna, who then claims leadership of the role of you know leadership of the cult. They they find all the sheets of uh, notes, and then Zach and Brody go to the school uh, since uh, uh, there there's amps there, so they can play the black hymn backwards. They they meet everybody else. You know, all the other members of the band, Deanna, Deanna Giles and Medina's there or whatever. That's when it's, it's revealed that Zach had uh, basically, like, you know, tried to fuck over uh, Brody for Medina. 
So they have this whole thing, and Zach's like, you know what, fuck all of you, and then leaves. So then uh, they still believe that they can uh, play the music backwards, and that and, you know, and that will do it. So they, they go to uh, Ricky Dagger's house to use his amps, uh, and then they, they have to confront more uh, demons and everything, which, you know, Shanna is the cult leader. She, she's there and takes Medina hostage, uh, forces Brody to turn over the music pages, and then uh, she tears them up and uh, takes everybody prisoner. Uh, Zach, you know, who felt bad, he shows back up, uh, manages to uh, free them, uh, and then they, they, they attack the cult. Uh, while they're in the middle of the ritual for Aloth, um, Brody starts to play the Black Hymn backwards while everyone else is fighting off all the attacks. And Dion and Giles are killed in all this, too. Uh, Brody uh, does not manage to play the hymn entirely before 3 a.m., so Aloth is able to enter Shanna's body. Zack kills her, but since he's the most evil person amongst the remaining, Aloth takes possession of his body. Brody realizes it's too late to complete the hymn, so instead he just plays... Uh, Heavy metal straight from the heart. <laughs> uh, the power of the music causes Zach to collapse and temporarily transform back into, you know, his human body. Uh, but it's brief, and Zach can feel Alaw trying to regain control, so Zach tells Brody to kill him, and which he does. And then a few months later, uh, Brody and Medina, uh, you know, now they're happy, you know, listening to death metal and whatnot. Uh, Brody puts on a record, and Zach's spirit plays a prank. Uh, to make it look like Aloth is returning. But then, like, later on after the credits, uh, Brody and Zach, who are just talking to each other through the record or whatever, they have a conversation about what hell is like. So that is Deathgasm. So uh, what were y'all's thoughts? Any questions, comments, concerns? Oh, man. Uh, as far as... Uh, I tell you, man, this one just kind of caught me by surprise. Um, you know, even on the second viewing, it was just... Uh, I don't know, man. This this thing was just a ride the entire way. <laughs> yeah, I hundred percent agree. Like this one felt like it, it came out of nowhere. It was really really solid flick. The only thing that kind of struck me as odd is as everybody's dying in this movie, there is no emotional attachment <laughs> from the lead characters. It's just yeah. like, all right, Smoke and Josh died. So, oh well. I guess, you know, if, I guess that's from the uh, perspective of, like, if they are, you know, hardcore, like, heavy metal dudes, then, like, they're into death and Satan and all that kind of shit. So, like, I guess the, the, the theory here, if you if you just kind of take the realism away, right, would be like, well, they're just cold, heavy metal dudes. They don't give a fuck. You know, death, who cares, right? And, and, and a lot of the people that do die, they're not really connected to them. You know, like, even their family treats them like shit, so they don't care about them, right? Uh, their friends are just a couple of nerds. I mean, I guess they care about those guys, but they didn't really have time to grieve. So, you know, yeah. I, I guess there was really no attachment for them for any of these people. And that's why they're just like, oh, well, you know, something else is that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I know we kind of just kind of zoomed right through the, the whole plot line. God, man, there was so much like there was so much gore that we missed yeah that we and it's really hard it's not so much gore too there's like a lot of visual effects that you you can't really explain uh correctly yeah i mean uh, you know look we off. took i took what you know give or take around 10 minutes to explain the movie yeah. but like like i said this is one you really need to see love it or hate it because yeah. of all the the, the uh the, um the gore, the special effects, and everything like that. How much of this you think too was uh, practical effects? I'd say it was a good mix of both in this, right? Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. yeah, definitely. Not all of this was. I'm sure they didn't have a massive budget to it either, but not a lot of this was CGI. I mean, I think there were a lot of practical effects here, but I'm sure it had its fair share. Mm -hmm. Either either way, I think it's well done uh, in, in that regard. So, I mean. You, if you like a gory movie, you will love this movie. If you're not a big fan of gore, I'd probably just avoid it altogether because it's <laughs> it's very gory. It, honestly, it's probably one of the more, even though it's jokey, right? It, there's a lot of comedy aspects yeah. to it. Yeah, this is probably one of the goriest goriest movies we've 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 sat down and watched. Wouldn't you Wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a, that yeah, one, but, but I, I would say it's, it's jokey enough where it doesn't. It never feels real. You know, like, for instance, when you're sitting there watching uh, Green Inferno, that feels real. I was thinking of, yeah, like, like, say, uh, Terrifier, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, maybe not feel real, but, like, it's 
like we always talk about before when Smoke talks about his gore scores, mean-spirited. Mean-spirited yeah. gore versus fun gore, you know. Yeah. This isn't mean-spirited, I don't think. This is more, let's just have fun watching, you know, fucking people explode and <laughs> just blow. <laughs> <laughs> as, no. as gross as that sounds, you know, in a horror movie bubble is what I mean, you know. Um, so it's a shame that, like, once again, the smoke isn't here for this one because I think his gore score is going to be pretty high, and, and he'll get to that later on when he when he comes back from vacation. But I'd have to think his gore score has got to be. Let's go like while we're having this discussion. Let's go ahead and what do you think? What, what let's place bets. What do you think his gore score is going to be before he does it? He doesn't do halves, does he? No, it's usually just you know even number. I haven't seen very many tens from him, so I'll go nine. Yeah, I was gonna say the same. I I don't know um, how many tens has he given out, and for which ones. Well, he gave Reanimator a ten, Terrifier a ten. That is it, as far as my records. Wow. Yeah, I and think, that goes all the uh, way back because remember he didn't start doing the gore score until the Monster Squad, and that was episode twenty-eight. Yeah. So anything before that is where we're going back and doing it, you know, on the uh, Spook Show Rewinds over on Patreon. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, only, from what I can tell, only two tens in the history of the show so far, and those two I just said. So, okay. I'm I'm going to, I'm going to side with Willie, because uh, even though I think that, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to say a ten. I'm going to, I'm going to say he'll give this one yeah. a ten. I could see him giving a, a eight or a nine just because smoke, you know, like yeah. maybe taking the, uh, the the funny into account. I could see mm. him doing an eight or a nine or something, but I'm going to say ten because, and I base that solely on what he said about Reanimator. You know, like it, to me, it's it's kind of this is gorier than Reanimator, right? And they're both kind of jokey. Yeah. There's a lot of comedy aspects to both. Yeah. So if you're going to give that a ten, I think you'd have to give this a ten in my mind. But hey, you know, smoke has a different. Uh, way of looking at these things, you know, and, <laughs> and, yeah. and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take him for his, his opinions because he's the, he's the pro. Uh, he, he's got more in his memory banks of movies that he forgot that he watched than we've all watched combined, you know, as far as horror movies. <laughs> are concerned. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go to him, but yeah, we'll see what he says. I, so I guess we'll kind of settle on, he, he's either going to say nine or 10, uh, but we'll see how, what he has to say um, whenever he gets back on <laughs> the opening credits. You know, we always we always joke about it, right? Uh, but yeah, th- these, these were these were pretty good, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, these were pretty good. I know yeah. we joke about them, but yeah. still, it's always like th- that's always just uh, usually me uh, or all of us just trying to find something positive about a shitty movie. Like, well, <laughs> the, the credits were all right. That's the standing joke. But yeah, these yeah. were actually pretty good. <laughs> God, there were so many good kills in this. Yeah. Uh, God, there's just so many. Yeah, so I, I think we all. Recommend it. We'll say that yeah. before we get into our star ratings. We recommend you at least go watch it. You know whether you love it or hate it. I think it's you know if you're in the gore or heavy metal or anything. Although I not, will say this, there's probably like, not a lot I'm of like. Not a, I'm not a fan of metalcore. You know I don't I don't listen to it at all. Um, you're off the yeah. show, but you're gone. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't listen to it. But no, uh, yeah, I I enjoyed this one, and uh, you know we'll get to that. I think uh, like what I was going to say is I think if you're a fan of heavy metal, although I don't think there's a lot of real like heavy metal songs. I'm sure there's a few, but like none of them. Because I think I saw somewhere along the line here is like apparently they tried to recruit some bigger bands. Like, you know, they tried to get Metallica and, you know, that level mm-hmm. of bands to have some involvement in it, you know, to put a song in or something. And they couldn't they didn't really find any takers. So like, I think a lot of this is kind of like B-level metal and maybe, you know manufactured kind of metal it's not like ozzy or you know there's not that yeah. kind of thing in it but um yeah but i think if you're a fan of heavy metal and really gory movies i think you're gonna like it so uh i guess we'll you know with that out of the way i guess we'll go ahead and uh, get to the star ratings i'm gonna go i'm gonna go a solid three and a half for all the reasons that we listed and uh that it's just fun it's and, and it's, it's fast paced there's not many dull moments in this movie it's balls to the wall pretty much the entire time so you don't have a lot of time to get bored with it or anything like that. That's for damn sure. So uh, it's well made. It's funny. It's gory. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big I'm a big metal fan. So you know, there's going to be a bonus half a star or so for that alone. So yeah, I'm going to go three and a half. So now, Donnie, go ahead. That, now it's your it's your floor. Yeah, this is um, yeah, this is a no brainer for me. This is uh, you know, an easy four stars uh, for me. Even you know, not being a fan of metalcore screamo. You know, all those uh, <laughs> subgenres. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, just 
this this movie is just a blast to watch. Um, and it it doesn't you know doesn't pull any punches, doesn't hold anything back. Um, you know, especially the uh, you know the box of church stuff. Uh, you know, that, <laughs> there's a lot of good know. there are a lot of good gags in this uh, that, like I said, you just need to see. You know, yeah, some of and, them you can't describe, well, and then there's that where like they're literally killing demons and shit with dildos and uh, 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 <laughs> other. Yeah, stuff this like, this movie has something for everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> just that's, that's an understatement. <laughs> All right, Will, what do you think? I'm going to go with three and three quarters, pretty much echoing everything that y'all have already said. I mean, the movie was just nonstop from from the get-go. A lot of laughs, a lot of kills. I mean, if you, I feel like if you like movies like, say, like, uh, I don't know, like Zombieland, you know, stuff like that, you're going to love this movie. Gory horror comedies, you know, if you're going to label it. I think that'd be a, the simplest way to, to explain this movie would be like a gory horror comedy. All right, so with all the star ratings out of the way, I guess, uh, Donnie, I'll go ahead and toss to you. Connections. Connections. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I would love to make uh, some connections here, but uh, uh, th- this this movie stands alone. There's uh, there's not <laughs> uh, there is really no there's no one, no one from uh, um, from Deathgasm uh, cast or crew that has worked on previous um, previous Spook Show episodes. So I think you're going to kind of run it, it. It reminds me a lot of like Wolf Cop in a sense, if you think about it, mm-hmm. because. Wolf Cop was like what was it, like Saskatchewan or wherever the hell they made that somewhere up in Canada, and bumfuck, yeah. bumfuck Egypt somewhere yeah. in Canada. Saskatchewan, and, yeah, yeah, I think that's right. that. That sounds right, Saskatchewan. But anyways, a lot of those guys were like local to that, you know. Yep. So I think you've got a lot of that here. These are like New Zealand guys. So like, if we haven't done any a lot of the movies that were, you know, of New Zealand origin, then we, you're not going to run into a lot of connections. So it makes yeah. sense. All right, so Will, that, that leads us to you. <laughs> All right, uh, so we've got the uh, the guy from the band uh, right off the top uh, who got his uh, throat cut. The two guys that got their uh, head chopped off. Oh, it was actually the, the dude that got his head chopped off and they stuck it back on and then <laughs> chopped it off again. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you've got his friend's dad who got an engine dropped on his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we start hitting zombies. The zombie got split in half. Fortune teller got her uh, heart punched out. There was a stab in the throat. The aunt and uncle with the sex toy deaths, seven and eight. (laughs) Cousin got his head chopped off. The half-naked guy, weed whacker. (laughs) I forgot about that one. (laughs) Dick Demon. (laughs) (laughs) Unnamed actor, Dick Demon. (laughs) One of the goons who took a chainsaw up the behind. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's normal <laughs> you're gonna go uh, out uh, another another goon got uh, chainsawed and then stepped on then we got into the Mortal Kombat portion of the show where uh, his friend got his uh, spine ripped out the other guy had his arms ripped out and then we've got a good handful of zombie kills so a uh, drill to the head for a zombie kill uh, stomp out on a zombie kill then you have the spinning chainsaw pirouette that uh, took out 17 through 22. 23, to, 23 through 28 was uh, with uh, Axe. 29 went back to the drill. 30 through 32 were chainsawed again. 33 was uh, the one that got dismembered, uh, chopping the legs, arms, and head off. 34 was uh, the lady that was getting possessed and got stabbed in the back. And then... He had to choke his friend out to save the day. Bam. Just looking at the list here, that's one of the highest ones we've ever done. Like, it's at least the third highest that you had a number to. Because there were, uh, like, say, the Devil's Reign and Demons, where you were unsure. Like, you know, that was like, it could be infinity. You know, like, yeah. who knows? There's no solid number. But as far as, like, the ones where you gave a solid number, by, by my quick account of the list here, this is the third highest kill count of... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Four. Fourth highest. I skipped one. 
another wolf cop had 54 in it. <laughs> I forgot about that one. But yeah, there, there's been a few. But yeah, this is like the fourth highest by my, other than those two that could have been like apocalypse. So uh, there's that. So like we said, Smoke isn't here, so he can't give the gore score. But we took our stabs at that a little while ago. So we'll see if those, any of those are right. I have a feeling we're either nine or 10. I'd be shocked really if it's any lower than say mm-hmm. an eight. <laughs> If he comes up with like a seven or something, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Are you sure you watch this? <laughs> so like like we said, uh, we do the rotation thing now where like each one of us uh, has picked a movie. We'll pick Night of the Living Dead. This was my choice, Deathgasm. And Donnie, you've got next choice. But before uh, you announce it, I'll go ahead and say what's coming up uh, next week. We begin our cannon fodder series with, I don't, I don't think it's hyperbole to say one of our, probably all of our, Favorite canon movies um, ever released. 1987, Sylvester Stallone, canon classic, Over the Top, is what we chose to start the Cannon Fodder series off in. So basically the premise of Cannon Fodder is all of these, will it'll be a little sub-series that we do where we're just talking about mo- random movies from the canon catalog. So they didn't really do a lot of horror movies. They did a handful. Matter of fact, we did one uh, New Year's Evil. That was a canon release, an early canon release. Um, but we figured, you know, we all love canon films, so this is an easy way for us to kind of squeeze some canon movies into the rotation. So we're going to begin with Over the Top next week. So the next episode after that will be episode 105. And, Donnie, that's your choice, so you go ahead and announce it right here, right now. Oh, man. You know, I had uh, I, I was I was kind of going back and forth on, the, on this one or another one that I actually had... Uh, about three of them, and this was going to be an older movie uh, since we did uh, Deathgasm from um, uh, 2015. But you know, in the rotation, this is going to be an older one. So uh, we're going back to 1979. Uh, we're going to do Phantasm. Ooh, that is a good one. Now, if you recall, we had that one on the uh, on the list. It was on the poll. It was the first Patreon poll I think we did back in. October of 2021. Remember, uh, mm. basically, we had to decide a series. We gave three choices. I, I want to say it was Phantasm. Uh, yeah, that's right. Nightmare on Elm Street and Hellraiser, and and the and the patrons chose Hellraiser, so we've been dipping in yeah. and out of that. But uh, Phantasm almost almost got it there. So that yeah. is that's a good that's a good pull. And uh, you know we don't have to necessarily go through the whole series. You know, yeah. starting with that. I mean, I, you know, we eventually will anyways. But uh, yeah. That that's a good one, man. I, I'm, <laughs> and I know you just made Smoke a happy man too. I can guarantee you that. So, <laughs> uh, so that means next week we've got the can- the first Cannon Fodder episode, episode 104, over the top, and then episode 105, Phantasm. So, lots of cool stuff to look forward to, and uh, we'll be talking more about that, I'm sure, over on Deadline Horror News and uh, over on the weekly uh, video minisodes we do, Library of the Professor. Uh, I'm sure all these things will come back up, and we'll discuss them a little bit. So. I guess that's it for uh, uh, Deathgasm, guys. Anything, any last little parting words for Deathgasm before we close the book? I hope the uh, sequel gets funded somehow. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be very interesting to watch a watch a sequel to this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'd be fun. I mean, it'd be fun. I, just I, I hope it gets made. Hold out. Hope. All right. So uh, come back next week for the beginning of Cannon Fodder with Over the Top. So for uh, Professor Smoke, who couldn't be with us, he's on vacation. And for Donnie and for Will, I'm Josh. We are the All-American Spook Show Horror Podcast, and we will talk to you next week.